that. Let's just give counter... We can't disagree with the CDC, of course. We're not allowed to do that. But let's just give some, shall we say, counter-argument from uh, data from Western Australia. So this is the graph we've looked at a few times. Uh, this is here is where there was uh, previous vaccinations before COVID vaccinations. Uh, this was the reported adverse events on February uh, 2021 when COVID vaccines were introduced. And these, of course, are the mass of adverse uh, events that were reported in Western Australia. And yet it seems they're completely safe in the United States. So it's a bit strange to me. I'm, I'm just a bit dozy, probably. Well, John said it. He's a bit dozy. Cindy's a bit dozy too at the moment. Now, we are allowed to disagree with that and we can present a counter-argument. The counter-argument is that he's not dozy. He's just being disingenuous, although it's possible that he is both. And just to be clear, Cindy is never disingenuous, but she's sometimes a bit dozy. As John says, he has presented this chart a number of times. Not once has he provided the commentary that accompanies a chart and puts it in perspective. The high number of reports in 2021 following COVID-19 vaccination reflects higher uptake of COVID-19 vaccination and high engagement from the public and healthcare providers with the monitoring of vaccine safety. So there's a perfectly logical explanation for the increase in adverse event reports that has nothing to do with what John is trying to make out with his nudge, nudge, wink, wink stuff. And just to be clear, because John isn't, these are not reports of serious adverse events. These are reports of typical immune reactions like headache, lethargy, myalgia, which is sore muscles, injection site reactions and chest pain and chest pain means what it says if it was something if it was from something serious that would be reported as well of course there are also reports of rare more serious adverse events but that's not what is driving the increase in reports so is john saying that reports of headaches and lethargy are reasons to think there is a problem with the vaccine he certainly never used to think that. So, right. So th th that's what we're talking about, those systemic and local side effects. Now, the Pfizer, um, uh, people who had one dose of Pfizer, they, here they followed up 282,000 people. And of that 282,000 people, 13% had systemic side effects. 13%. So for the first dose of Pfizer, and 71.9% had local side effects, mostly very mild. So 13% on the first vaccine for the Pfizer. Uh, for the second dose of the Pfizer, uh, 28,207 people were followed up who'd had the second dose of the Pfizer, and there 22% developed side effects. So we see that more people get side effects with the second dose. So 13% got side effects with the first dose, systemic side effects. 22% with the uh, second dose of the Pfizer. So personally, I'm just uh, waiting incredibly impatiently for my second dose of Pfizer. But when I do, um, I'll have a 22% chance of getting systemic side effects, which is a price I'm more than happy to pay. So is John being dozy or disingenuous or both? I'll let you decide. 